This is 13 Eyewitness News at 630. We want to take you back now to the breaking news that we are following in North Harris County, where seven people have been shot, five people killed. What you're looking at is a live picture from Sky Eye HD. A manhunt is now underway for the gunman who killed five people. Investigators are now rushing, we are told, to a second scene. The shooting actually happened along Leaflet Lane near Cypress Wood. Two children also airlifted to the hospital in that shooting. We've got a crew on the scene there, but it uh, certainly looks like these investigators are in a rush to get to that second scene if, in fact, they are not following someone. Again, Sky Eye HD uh, is watching all of this happening up in North Harris County. All right, food stored at the wrong temperature and a roach. No prep forming area and desiccated rodent remains on a glue trap. We're going to have breaking news. Get you right back to it. Let's go to Ilona or Eric. Go ahead. Yeah, Jeff, we wanted to get back to this. This is, in fact, a chase. Uh, again, in North Harris County, it looks like authorities are actually following this gray car in connection with that shooting that we just told you about, where seven people were shot, five people killed, two children were life flighted to the Kingwood Medical Center, uh, or rather to hospitals. And what you're watching here is uh, authorities there uh, following this vehicle. Yeah, we'll get you caught up here if you're just now tuning in. So earlier, uh, within the last hour or so, there was a shooting at uh, Cypress Wood off I-45 in North Harris County. We were told seven people were shot. Five of those were dead. Of that, those two children yes. were flown to the hospital. At that point, when we got that news, the gunman was still on the loose. And now we've also got uh, Sky IHD following what appears to be a chase here. Several cruisers. We've got Don Armstrong in Sky IHD. Don, we see several cruisers and this gray sedan as one races in front. Don, can you hear us right now? Can, uh, yes, I can. Uh, I'm trying to get a location of exactly where we are. This, uh, we caught up with this chase uh, at the site of the shooting, and we were looking for other. Uh, Police cars at the scene, and all of a sudden, one of them took off, and we followed him for a while, and he caught up with this car here. They had placed spike strips uh, earlier on uh, in this chase, but the driver of this car, matter of fact, there are some more spike strips. They're trying to get the car stopped, as you can see, but uh, the car has yet to be stopped. Um, continues at erratic speed, sometimes slow, sometimes fast on the street up here in uh, northern Harris County. We're just off of I-45 in the Cypress Wood area. As you mentioned, uh, a whole bunch of constable cars are following this car and uh, trying to get it stopped. We do not know if this car, the driver in this car, is involved in the shooting. But uh, we are going to continue to follow this chase as long as we can here and see what happens. Uh, we don't know if those spike strips worked or not. Eric? Yeah, yeah, Don, we definitely don't know who the person is in this vehicle, how they're associated with uh, the shooting of uh, seven people, five killed. But we do know this person does not want to slow down for several constables on the tail. And I can see, uh, Don, you're trying to zoom in to see if that tire is flat or not, that back rear tire. Uh, too hard to tell, but it definitely looks like it is low if it is not flat. But either way, this vehicle is still able to... Uh, to move at a pretty decent speed right now. Yeah, as uh, Don yeah. mentioned and Eric just mentioned, uh, you know, again, this is uh, coming right after we've been telling you about a shooting very close to the area there. Don, can you tell us when you got word that uh, these deputy constables were following this vehicle and whether or not they actually left the scene of the shooting to get there? I'm sorry, Alona. I had several people talking to me while uh, while you were talking. Uh, all I know is is that there are a lot of police vehicles chasing this one vehicle. Uh, let me talk to my pilot here just for a second. Aaron, do you know what street we're on here? All right, Don. As you're kind of looking, we can definitely well, see. Uh, wow, uh, several cars. Hard to take count right now, but it looks like it's going to be close to a dozen vehicles uh, pursuing. Uh, this gray sedan, again, that uh, police are pursuing immediately after the shooting. 
of seven people in North Harris County. We've seen them go through several intersections. Right now, uh, law enforcement being very cautious with this sedan uh, that appears to be going probably near or at the speed limit at this point. Uh, as this chase continues here in North Harris County, we have seen some uh, cruisers speed up ahead of this vehicle, uh, maybe to throw out some spike strips, you would think. But at this point, we haven't seen that take place. We've just seen the sedan be able to make its way through several intersections. And uh, you can see we're going to come up on another one here as this sedan moves at, at relatively a, a slow speed. Yeah, Don, you made the point. Some of the driving is erratic because no doubt they are running through what looks to be a red light right there. They're not stopping for any of those lights, not incredibly high speeds. And it was just, I believe, clipped um, by that patrol car. There's certainly a lot of smoke or exhaust coming out of the back, but that person continues to drive the vehicle. Hard to tell also whether maybe that's from a flat tire right now. Uh, it could be a tire that's smoking. We did see them try to throw out some spike strips, and it looked like it may have caught the back of that car, possibly that left rear tire, and that's what mm -hmm. we're trying to keep an eye on as they now get into some traffic. Yes. There's a lot of stopped vehicles here. I think you're right, Alona. I think Kirk, that... Uh, Go ahead, Don. Alona, we are... I'm sorry, I just wanted to let you guys know we just turned off of Kirkendall just past Luetta into this subdivision here, and uh, that le the left rear tire is flat on the car, so it won't be too long, and that car will be disabled. Uh, I think that they're just holding back now just to see uh, exactly when the car is going to come to a stop, because it will eventually. Yeah, this is uh, getting a little ominous here because now we're pulling into a, a heavy residential uh, neighborhood here. We've got homes all up and down the streets here in the subdivision as this driver of the sedan continues to kind of just zigzag uh, into this neighborhood. Again, several patrol cars uh, in pursuit. That vehicle now, that back tire, as we noted, is completely out. We saw that white smoke turn to black smoke. Uh, he could be or she could be on the rim at this point yeah. as she's keeping a, a relatively low speed as well. Looks and like here's a, a cul-de-sac. Yep, and it looked like a tire just came flying off of it a few houses back. Let's see what happens as the car pulls into the cul-de-sac, slows down. We've seen uh, at least 10 or, or I would say more than a dozen police cruisers right behind it. It looks like the car is stopping. And Our we are going to be on a very uh, wide shot of this um, because we don't know how this driver is going to react. Again, not sure whether or not this person was involved in the shooting that we've been following. You can see all those officers getting out of their police vehicles but staying behind their cars with weapons drawn. Yes, they are definitely taking cover behind that uh, SUV, that cruiser right there. At this point, we saw the, uh, the vehicle uh, turn and kind of face the cruisers, but we have not seen anyone emerge from that sedan just yet. But a flurry of officers are now making their way up to the front line, so to speak. And there is obviously going to be some confrontation here, hopefully peacefully here in, uh, at some point, as we see everyone gather behind that SUV. I just counted 18 police cruisers, and that's only what we can see right here in our field of vision. Again, we are keeping this shot very wide because we don't know exactly how this is going to end. It looks like a walking trail. Uh, back behind that cul-de-sac. Obviously, this is a residential area, um, a very nice neighborhood, obviously a quiet neighborhood where hopefully everyone has gotten the word when they see that many police cruisers and will stay inside of their homes. So far, the person driving this vehicle has stayed inside of the car, and we have a whole contingent of officers that are shielding themselves behind that first vehicle there. And again, if you're just tuning in, this is all the aftermath of a shooting uh, in North Harris County off I-45 in Cypresswood, uh, where five people were killed, two others, children, flown to the hospital. And at some point after that shooting, police were able to this is a video we're telling you about from earlier at the scene, and uh, you can see investigators are still out there at this point. And as they were investigating out there, that's how somehow they were able to pinpoint that gray sedan uh, just a few miles away, if even that far, and that's when that pursuit started down several roads. Yeah, erratic driving, as Don said, not reaching incredibly high speeds, but that driver did not stop for any red lights. 
any uh, police vehicles that pulled out in front of them, certainly not for spike strips that ended up catching the back left tire of that vehicle. We saw the car end up on its rim as we take you out here back live to this neighborhood where the chase has come to an end because that person ended up driving into this cul-de-sac. We've got at least 20 police cruisers uh, and officers in every one of those vehicles now out of their cars uh, with weapons drawn. Again, the suspect that was driving this vehicle is still inside of the car. Yeah, with uh, it's too hard to tell, but but obviously there's some sort of some sort of communication taking place here, whether it's via bullhorn uh, or any other device on that cruiser. But we've seen no one emerge from that gray sedan, despite the tire being blown out and him being kind of locked or she being locked into this cul-de-sac here. And it's been several minutes that have passed now since we've seen uh, officers. Uh, we saw 18 cruisers that alone accounted all come up here. We've got Don Armstrong who's been monitoring the situation as well. Don, we see the bird's eye view. You've been giving us here live pictures via Sky Eye. And at this point, it doesn't look like anybody's uh, ready to get out of that gray sedan yet. It does not, Eric. No shots have been fired that we are aware of just yet. But as you can see, a full platoon of uh, officers with a lot of uh, police presence here at this scene. Uh, looks as though the gray car has just stopped. Uh, we do not know if any kind of verbal uh, communications is going on between the police and the suspect inside the car. Uh, everybody is in a defensive position here. And I'm going to zoom in uh, on the police officers to see if they have guns drawn. I do see the, the dog there, as you can see. Uh, the guns are uh, available, but they're not drawn on the car. So uh, we're hopefully uh, they're going to end this peacefully uh, before this uh, scene comes to an end. Yeah, a huge contingent there. All of the manpower and firepower that they could need. So they're handling this uh, in an incredibly calm situation. The Again, those vehicle speeds never reached high speeds, um, even on some of those wider roads. Um, as this person exited off of the Kirkendall area, driving through these neighborhoods, we saw deputies stay quite a ways back. When they did pass, they simply got in front of the vehicle to get those spike strips out. Uh, until eventually one police cruiser did clip the back of the vehicle. Again, the left back tire was blown out, and then the person ended up driving into this cul-de-sac. Officers keeping their distance there. Again, they have a police dog um, just in case they end up needing a canine unit. But as you can see, they're taking their time and using a lot of patience in this situation. They are, and you can imagine... Uh... Uh, the fear that some of these homeowners in this cul-de-sac might be feeling right now as this scene is unfolding literally in their front yards. Uh, but at this point, as we've noted, it's peaceful. Uh, you would think some sort of communication is taking place, that uh, canine is out, uh, but we've not been able to see any type of movement from that sedan there. And certainly no one has emerged yet. As you can see, a contingent of uh, law enforcement uh, continuously gathering and also shielding themselves behind that SUV, which uh, they believe this person is somehow associated with the shooting death uh, there in the spring area of at least five people and two other people uh, injured enough to be uh, life flighted to an area hospital. Yeah, again, that initially, uh, this shooting initially happened um, in a home here uh, in a, this residential area. This is actually at 711 Leaflet Lane. Uh, in the spring area, and you can see uh, all of the officers who were out there earlier. That's where they got the call of shots fired. They found seven people shot, as Eric said, five people dead. And then the word came that that suspect from the shooting was on the run. Right after that, we picked up this police chase uh, being followed by Sky IHD, this silver sedan deciding not to stop for this huge contingent of deputies that were following. We did see some erratic driving, as Don said, um, blowing through stoplights, stop signs, not stopping for anyone or anything as they drove along until it came to an end here in this neighborhood. Yeah, and again, we're still waiting. Uh, this has been several minutes now that this sedan has kind of cornered himself by driving into the uh, cul-de-sac here. Uh, of a neighborhood uh, not too far from the shooting scene, maybe just a few miles, that we saw that uh, chase ensue. And at this point, no movement from that sedan, as we have live pictures from Sky IHD, but we certainly see uh, almost, if not a dozen plus uh, officers all behind this SUV, 
and uh, several and different uh, yards right here of this neighborhood as I'm sure they've alerted homeowners to just stay inside and and possibly even take cover at this point. And it does look like some of those officers are going up to the doors of some of these houses. Don, we've been over this for a couple of minutes now, and I haven't seen a single homeowner come out of their home to take a look at what's going on, which is very good news given the circumstances. I'm sure that they're watching this on their televisions at home. Uh, I, we did see some of the officers go door to door behind this scene, and uh, apparently they all said stay indoors until this is over with. Yeah, certainly getting the word out, no doubt communicating uh, with social media as well to get the word out that this was happening. Um, and hopefully those neighbors all understanding that this is a time they need to stay inside of their homes. But again, we haven't seen a single person walk out, even with a contingent like this outside in their driveways. And Don, as we've noted to viewers already, we're definitely keeping this shot uh, a bit wide right now. So we see one cruiser move a bit uh, because in case anything uh, was to happen here, whether it's gunfire from, from either party here. But as we broke away, Don, I did want to ask to some of the video we showed earlier, you've not been able to see uh, at all uh, who is in this vehicle, whether it's one person, two, or what they're doing at all, have you? Eric, uh, early on in the chase, before we went on the air, I zoomed in, and all I could see was the arm of a driver through the back window. That's not to say that there might not be somebody else in the car, but if um, I were a, a person to guess, I would say that yes, uh, I would say that it is just the driver there. They have been maneuvering some of the cars uh, for the mm -hmm. police up here toward the front and uh, putting the engine uh, between the police and the driver of the car. I think that is a defensive move on their part, not knowing exactly what the driver is going to do. Well, and that's a good point. Uh, if this person is in fact connected to the shooting of seven people, five of them now dead, they would have every reason to believe that this person is armed uh, and, and acting very erratically. So obviously in a situation like this, they are not going to take any chances. Uh, and as we've been saying, with a huge contingent of people and what looks to be a rather controlled situation at this point, they'll be as patient as they need to be and they will take all the time that they need to take if they need to get any sort of negotiators out there on the scene. We saw them arrive with a police dog and they're just not taking any action until they absolutely need to. Yeah, and you're right, Alona. They do essentially, for the most part, have this scene under control. If someone was to come out and try to flee from that vehicle, they do have that canine they can send uh, to pursue uh, the person in that vehicle. And at this point, uh, as Don has noted as well, uh, several officers maneuvering their vehicles to also uh, give them some protection. Uh, if for any reason bullets do begin to fly in this situation, uh, but at this point, uh, the person in that sedan uh, has not decided to uh, make any communication yet with uh, officers as they uh, continue to try to surround this vehicle and keep him or she locked into this cul-de-sac. Now, you can see the video from the chase a little while ago. We do want to mention that as soon as we got word that there had been this shooting in the spring area of seven people, five of them deceased and two children taken by life flight. We immediately had ground crews headed there to that scene. We also have ground crews headed to this neighborhood scene, but obviously we're not going to be hearing from them as they're going to be kept yes, back can. quite a ways. But we're going to continue to update everyone on this story all throughout the evening on our website online at abc13.com. Also follow us on Twitter and you can download our news app to get all of the latest information, especially for folks who are actually close to the area because we'll be keeping you up to date. That's right. So we will stay on this story and obviously the ending here at some point we'll have for you as, as I noted already, either online through our news app and certainly on Eyewitness News at 10 o'clock tonight as we seem to be at a stalemate here after a chase and a cornering, so to speak, in this cul-de-sac here after a shooting that left five people dead and two children flown to a hospital. Again, this all starting at 711 Leaflet Lane where the actual shooting took place, this chase going on for 10 to 15 minutes, and then ending here in this neighborhood just off of Kirkendall. Again, we will be keeping an eye on this one throughout the evening, and of course, we'll have the latest coming up for you at 10 o'clock. Thank you for being with us. We'll see you tonight at 10.